Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we're actually going to find out what the mainstream is and what the mainstream isn't. Today, as of the recording of this video, it is um, Friday the 28th of July. The podcast episode, the response to Terrence Hayes and Breaking Form went up. And there are two things in that episode that I either didn't touch on or I didn't clarify. So maybe I'll keep the clarification for the next podcast because the people who listen to the podcast will listen to it. Because I don't know if you guys knew this, but the people who listen to the podcast are not the same people who watch the videos. Shocking, I know. Like, why wouldn't one come over from the other? I don't get it. I don't understand. Anyway, so what I wanted to talk about, um, there was something that Terrence Hayes said on that uh, Breaking Forum podcast where he said he doesn't want to be mainstream because mainstream the mainstream doesn't get something or like something about him having mistakes in his book or like something being hard to understand or something like that. And he was talking about the mainstream. Now, I don't know exactly how old Terrence Hayes is and I could probably look it up or I could just guess, which I'm going to do right now anyway. I'm going to assume that him and Aaron on breaking form are roughly my age give or take five years mm, roughly we'll say so with that said they probably too were around to know the difference between what media and society was like before the internet and I know a lot of you millennials and Gen Zers and zillennials and whatever the next fucking thing is where people watch this in the future are probably tired of hearing like the old fogies say, well, before the internet, like that's the, uh, that's the new equivalent of back in my day, but it, it's true. And here, here's the thing before television, you guys are like, Jesus Christ, you're going back way too far, dude. Before television, newspapers were the thing. That's how everyone got any kind of information. And if you were printed in a newspaper, that meant not only were you educated enough to be printed in a newspaper, and I know there were people who were uneducated being printed in newspapers, but bear with me here. But that also meant that the newspaper stood behind the things you said and the newspaper was respected by the people and so if the newspaper says trust this dude's articles because he has our stamp of approval now the masses go oh i could trust what this guy says that's where we're going to get our information that's how newspapers worked for decades and decades and decades okay television comes out Okay, And when television came out, television came out basically as a vehicle to sell advertising, all right? And that's still what it is, but less and less people watch television, okay? As television grew, there were basically three networks. You had NBC, ABC, and CBS, okay? That's who there was. And they had their news channels. Now, once this started happening, you will notice, and it was a slow thing, and it happened over many, many years, a lot of the newspaper organizations were trying to buy up the television organizations, and vice versa, you know, in some instances, because there was a lot of money in it, but he who controls everything controls the opinion of the people. Now, what this opinion of the people is at this point is what is referred to is the mainstream. This is the mainstream appeal. This is what everyone kind of can agree is something good. Okay? Now, when the 80s hit, not only did you end up at the late 80s getting a new network in Fox, but cable went national. Okay, this created such a huge clusterfuck in the media landscape because now suddenly there's like a million channels and before there were like three and then maybe a couple local channels. Okay, 
So what happened when this went down, when cable went national? Okay, what happened? A lot of these media companies started to, or tried to, buy up as many of these channels as they possibly could to consolidate their power over the mainstream, okay? So then we get into the 90s, and when we're talking about television networks, radio stations, news outlets, um, newspapers, the other thing is that we could talk about is the literary world, okay? And before probably the 70s, bookstores were bookstores, mom and pop bookstores all over the country, okay? Then you started having some, like, bigger chains. Like, there were chains like Walden and um, B. Dalton and stuff like that, you know. But then you had the Barnes & Noble. Like, basically, the bookstore superstore. What Barnes & Noble did was start putting a lot of these smaller, like, bookstores out of business. And for a lot of people who were around when there were a lot of small bookstores, the thing that we hated about the big stores was that the small bookstores seemed to be more curated. So, like, you go in there and you're getting, like, like, oh, wow, I didn't even hear about this book and, like, all this other stuff. It was, like, a cool thing and you were learning shit that you weren't getting from the mainstream But Barnes & Noble, wanting to be Barnes & Noble, started eating up as many of these stores as they could, whether by buying them or by just running them out of business. And then you had, like, Borders and some other companies that came in to try to compete, and it didn't work, okay? So by the time the 90s rolled around, like, it was really tough for any kind of independent anything to exist um i think probably the best indie thing that came out of the 90s was record labels but even the record labels started getting like picked up by the major labels and all this happened because of the grunge and alternative thing and all this other shit but so you had a lot of small labels that would like go, hey, like, could could we, could you guys, we'll pay you, we'll buy you out half or something to be a subsidiary of our gargantuan music group. And a lot of these small record labels were barely making ends meet, even with huge bands. So a lot of them did that thing. Okay. And so this is where, like, the 90s was the last, like, stand for the stranglehold on all forms of media. Okay? And even radio. Then something fucking happened in the early 2000s. People started to figure out things they could do with this new fangled thing called the internet. Okay? And Napster happened. And LimeWire happened. And all this other shit like that. Now, those things were not good, and I think that pretty much destroyed the record industry, and I think that the record industry is still having a fucking hard-ass time trying to figure out how it's going to fucking exist 23 fucking years later still trying to figure it out because the Spotify model is not working the way I think a lot of people thought it would anyway so radio is basically dead like who listens to fucking radio stations anymore I know kids don't like if you're in your late 30s or 40s, you might still listen to some fucking radio station, but you're much more likely to get your music recommendations from your friends or from a TikTok or a reel you saw. You know what I'm saying? Amazon happened. Amazon 
basically killed Barnes and Noble. I mean, Barnes and Noble still exists. It's on its like dying legs, probably. But Amazon completely reinvented the wheel when it comes to selling books or anything for that matter. Okay. Now, what this has done has turned a lot of the publishing industry consolidate, consolidate, consolidate grow, grow, grow through consolidation. But there's going to come a time when there's not going to be any other large publishing houses to merge with. And when that happens, they're going to be judged on how much money is actually coming in. And if things still go the way they're going. And I know there's things out there that make it look different than it is, but honestly, you can smell the death. And I'm not saying the traditional publishing industry is going to die altogether, but it is going to have to downsize a great deal in order to exist. With that said, in order for that to happen, another thing has to happen, and that is the legitimization of self-published authors because you can't have traditional publishing be completely crippled and then say self-publishing is still like stupid like oh self-publishing who does that that's lame that's what losers do no that's not how it is okay so with all of this said media newspapers print online magazines radio all of these things have drastically fucking changed over the last 20 years. And the thing that has grown rapidly over the last 20 years is social media. And social media is basically... Remember in the beginning of this whole thing, I said, like, if this newspaper backs this dude, everyone now can listen to this guy because he has the respect of the newspaper and all that shit? None of that shit matters anymore. Instead of mainstream, because basically this whole thing is, the mainstream's dead. The only people who say mainstream are old fucks like us who remembered when that was a legitimate thing. People, generations below us, are now going to speak in terms of things being viral. There is no mainstream anymore. There hasn't been a mainstream for some time, and that's why so many media outlets don't know what the fuck to do. It's like a king without a kingdom, okay? Yes, there are still people there. Yes, there are still people who are listening, but not nearly the numbers that used to be there even 10 years ago, okay? So if you take those numbers from 10 years ago, because a lot of you guys are like, oh, the sky's falling. Da, 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 da. No, listen, if you take how many people were using all of these things 10 years ago and then look at the numbers of all the people who were using all these things 10 years before that and you see the decline, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out all of this shit is near the end or at least the end of how we know it now, okay? So, with that said, being viral isn't even necessarily something you need to do. You just have to be self-sustaining. You just need to have a sustainable market. You need to be able to communicate with your audience, communicate with your base, and you need to be able to give them things when they want things. That's, that's the equivalent of mainstream today. There will never be a mainstream like there was 50 years ago or 30 years ago. That will never happen again. That's a completely different time. Okay? And it's hard because a lot of people who are still involved in shit and who still run companies like this remember what it was like in the 80s. That time will never happen again. The mainstream is dead. It does not exist and it will not be resuscitated. Okay? And depending on how long this fucking strike goes on in Hollywood... Just saying, 
Just fucking saying, everybody. So, <sighs> with that said, do what you have to do to create an audience of sustainable fans and people who are interested in the stuff you do. It will take some time, but that is how you do it. Okay? Any one of you could get on the New York Times bestsellers list. It's not hard. You pay for it. It's a fucking joke. And what a lot of the academic people and a lot of the traditional publishing people try to make you think is that the New York Times bestseller list is like a stamp of approval. Uh, no, it's a stamp of approval on the back of a fucking check. That's what it is. Okay. Anybody can fucking get it. It's fucking <laughs> stupid. So anyway, guys. Type hard. Don't worry about becoming mainstream because there is no mainstream to become a part of. Okay? So, I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.